What happens if you take integrated graphics from 2009 and push them to the absolute limit? This is an HP Office PC and inside it is an AMD 785G chipset which includes a Radeon HD 4200 GPU. In November, I made a video about it and it blew up. Thank you for all the comments and support. So by popular demand, 4200 makes another grand appearance. According to many comments, these integrated Radeons were actually the better end of the stick as many other chipset graphics of the era from brands like Sys, Via and even Intel from before the HD graphics days were way worse. I'll showcase them on this channel if I can get my hands on them. I'm sure we can all agree that Windows 7 in the big 2026 is a bit ridiculous. I saw a comment from a viewer about how they installed Windows 11 on an old Athlon machine based on the same platform this PC is on. So I decided to make a deal with the devil and try to install it. The furthest I managed to get was the blue screen of death with various error messages. So is Windows 11 just us or is there something else wrong with this PC? The world may never know. So instead, I installed its f***ed up older brother, Windows 8.1. Immoderate language like Time to set up the graphics. I took a VGA cable and plugged it directly into the motherboard. Then I went to the BIOS and changed the primary video adapter from PCIe, my dedicated graphics card, to onboard the integrated graphics. Then I booted back into Windows, installed the GPU drivers and used a tool called Custom Resolution Utility to manually set my monitor's resolution since my VGA cable is missing an ID pin. Now it's time to take it to the next level. I opened MSI Afterburner which is a tool for overclocking graphics cards. I thought that if I overclock this GPU a bit, it could make it a bit more usable. By default, the GPU's core clock and memory clock are 500 and 667 MHz respectively. Core voltage, shader clock and fan speed can't be changed though. Then I went into the settings and tried unlocking all the voltage restriction stuff. Rebooted and got a scary warning from Afterburner basically telling me I'm on my own. I cranked that shit up and was able to boost my core clock from 500 to 650 MHz and my memory clock from 667 to 870 MHz. It's not that big of an increase but I think the results would still be interesting. The first game I tried was GTA 5, probably one of the heaviest games I tried. The lowest resolution it allows me to set is 800x600 which is a bit higher than the recommended 640x480 which tech power up only lists for this GPU as playable, whatever the fuck that means. Any higher resolutions are marked as unplayable, so keep that in mind. All the graphic settings are at their lowest. GTA 5 doesn't have a low option like most games, instead it has normal. I guess Rockstar didn't want poor people to feel bad about their shitty computer. I stepped outside and I got 9 FPS, which dropped down to around 6 to 7 FPS when I started driving. The GPU was working hard, completely maxed out at 100% usage, while the CPU was hardly working, barely breaking a sweat at around 20% usage. This means the GPU is the bottleneck. We'll see a lot of this during testing. Also, Afterburner says I have 3 gigabytes of VRAM, which is false because the HD4200 only has a jaw-dropping 256 megabytes of VRAM. I'm not sure where it got 3 gigs from. Maybe it's because I still had my dedicated GPU plugged in, or these stupid fucking drivers, or Windows 8. Who knows? The frame time graph is also going crazy which proves my point further. During missions, the terrible performance can really mess with scripting which makes certain sections jog on for longer than intended. In this section where you need to shoot, there's a lot of input lag which makes it borderline impossible to aim correctly. I didn't even know you could die in this mission. It's the first mission of the fucking game. The FPS is way worse in some cutscenes due to there being a depth of field effect that can't be turned off. Also, at this aspect ratio, cutscene framing is a bit broken. 
Next, I tried GTA 4, which is less optimized than GTA 5. It's actually known for having the worst PC ports ever. You are the youngest person ever. Knowing this, you'd think it run worse, but at 800 by 600 resolution and all lower settings, it actually runs better than GTA 5. Granted, it was only under 20 FPS and the input lag returned, making it difficult to drive, but at least you can't watch furniture popping anymore in cutscenes. I'm not even gonna try to play at any higher resolutions because I have a feeling it will run like pure ass. Next, I tried GTA San Andreas, which was designed for way worse hardware than 4 and 5. I set the graphics settings to 1080p at high quality, minimum draw distance and no anti-aliasing. In the last video, a few people pointed out that I was using the wrong color depth setting, 16-bit instead of 32-bit which is why I faced the color banding issue. In the opening cutscene, I got under 20 FPS and in game, I was getting around 9 to 12 FPS. So I changed the visual effects quality from high to low and ended up getting 30 to 40 FPS with a ton of input lag. I set the resolution to 720p and got around 50 to 60 FPS with less input lag but still noticeable. At 480p, I was getting 90 to 100 FPS with no input lag. The FPS drops down to around 80 when there are heavy effects on screen like in some cutscenes. Then I tried Half-Life 2 at 1080p all high settings. I got 20 FPS with a ton of input lag but at 720p I was getting around 40 FPS with less input lag but enough to make gameplay annoying. I set the resolution to 640x480 and I got 80 FPS with no input lag. Next I tried Half-Life 1 Source at 1080p all high settings. Surprisingly I was getting over 100 FPS with minimal input lag. This might be one of the few games that the HD 4200 can actually run well at 1080p. At 480p, I could get almost 300 FPS with no input lag. Next, I loaded up Counter-Strike Source as it's the newest Counter-Strike game that this stupid platform can run as it doesn't have SSE 4.2 support, meaning modern games like Counter-Strike 2 won't even open. At 1080p, with everything on high, I got 60 to 70 FPS with a ton of input lag, which makes it difficult to aim. Granted, I'm not very good, but the lag really doesn't help. When I set the resolution to 640x480, I got over 100 FPS with no input lag. Next, I tried the original Modern Warfare 2, a game that came out only a few months after the HD 4200. At 720p, with all low textures, I was getting 20 to 30 FPS with tons of input lag, which is performance that an Xbox 360 would laugh at. This isn't a game that enjoys having its resolution change, as when I tried lowering it, it opened 15 copies of itself and then fucking died. I asked my Discord server what other games I should test. I wasn't able to install some of them, such as Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, Bioshock Infinite, and Street Legal Racing Redline. I loaded up Left 4 Dead 2, a game that came out in the same year as the 4200. At 1080p, with all those settings, I got 10 to 12 FPS, and the input lag makes it really difficult to aim. At 720p, the input lag is a bit better, but I'm still getting sub 30 FPS. Then, I set the resolution to 640x480 and got 30 to 40 FPS, but the mouse was super responsive, meaning that I could actually aim. Crisis still pokes fun at my hardware on startup, but at 1080p with all lower settings, I'm getting 8 FPS. And at 800x600, I got under 30 FPS. Minecraft Java Edition gets around 20 FPS at 1080p with the lowest settings, and if I open my inventory, you can actually see the blocks lag behind the mouse when dragging them. In 480p windowed mode, I got around 45 FPS with a more responsive mouse. In 720p full screen, I was getting around 30 to 35 FPS, but I noticed this weird corruption spot that normally isn't supposed to be there. Anyway, at 480p full screen, I got 60 FPS. But I noticed that if I was at a certain build height, the blocks underneath me disappeared, which they shouldn't when the player is this low to the ground. A viewer commented that I should try an older version of Minecraft, so I loaded up release 1.8.9 and joined the biggest multiplayer server, Hypixel. I joined a game of Skywars and got 40 FPS at 1080p windowed mode with a ton of input lag. 
When I started bridging to the middle of the map, my blocks were invisible. Then other blocks around me also started vanishing. Then I fucking died because I couldn't aim correctly. In the next match, I fell off a bridge because I couldn't tell there was a missing block. In the match after that, I made sure to inform the players about my hardware situation, but this guy didn't give a shit and immediately started shooting me. I put down some blocks to protect myself and then I noticed I could see through them. Don't be fooled though, this is not cheating, I think. Because you can only see player name tags and not models through blocks. Then I joined classic duos, I was getting 13 FPS and the map was actively deforming in front of me. To nobody's surprise, I got clobbered. So I lowered the render distance to 2 chunks and set the resolution to 720p. I got over 100 FPS, but only because the world was disappearing around me. Here, I had lava thrown at me, but I couldn't tell because it doesn't render in. Whatever, anyone good at PvP should just remember. After that, I tried Need for Speed Underground. The highest resolution it seems to support is 1280 by 1024. I went into the settings and cranked up everything, loaded in a race and got locked 30 FPS with a ton of input lag. After turning down the settings, I was able to get 60 FPS, but now the graphics look more Nintendo 64 instead of PlayStation 2. With max graphics at 480p, I was indeed able to get 60 FPS. Fallout New Vegas at 800 by 600 runs at 20 to 30 FPS with lots of input lag. At 1080p, I'm getting 10 to 12 FPS. 3D games are pretty much hit or miss with this GPU, so I tried some 2D games to see if they'll perform better. First, I tried Sonic Mania. It seemed to be pretty much locked at 53 FPS with a bit of stuttering and input lag. This remains the same even in 3D sections like Blue Spears and Special Stages. Then, I loaded up Geometry Dash, a mobile game that people take way too seriously. At 1080p, I got 60 FPS. Most wrapped up levels run normally, except for the newest one, Dash, from the most recent 2.2 update. At the first jump, there are an insane amount of effects and fancy shit which makes the FPS jump off a cliff, leaving me unable to proceed past this section. Then, I tried Terraria, everyone's favorite Minecraft ripoff. At 1080p, I was getting below 30 FPS with a ton of input lag and the overall game speed just felt sluggish. Since I don't know how to play, I just built a 6-7 out of wood, albeit very slowly. One thing we all do with our GPUs, whether we realize it or not, is video decoding, like playing a YouTube video or watching a live stream. So I decided to find out how well the 4200 can do video playback. Back in the day, around when this GPU came out, AMD would brag about its ability to play HD videos, which it can indeed do. 1080p video at 30 FPS is no struggle. 1080p 60 FPS video is where it starts to struggle though. You can see the frames dropping. And when playing a 4K 60 video, the display driver topped out for a bit but was able to recover. But when I tried again, I got the blue screen of death. That might have been the only time someone's PC crashed because of a fucking video. Then, I had to find out one last thing, the perfect finale. Can it run Doom? It's known for running on many devices, from office phones, the ATMs, to la boo -boos. The point is, Doom runs on everything, so if the HD 4200 can't run it, it would be really embarrassing to get mugged by a fucking smart wristband. I'm using UZ Doom, which adds enhancements to the original game, like 3D floors, support for higher resolutions and modern graphics APIs like OpenGL and Vulkan, the latter of which isn't supported by the 4200. At 1080p, I got 30 to 40 FPS, but the strangest thing is that I wasn't getting any input lag. I went into the video settings and set the resolution to 320 by 200, which is what DOS games originally ran at back in the day. With this configuration, I got over 120 FPS. No, about that overclock, I had the idea to open GPU Z and check the clocks myself, 
there is barely a difference compared to the stock clocks. That overclock, it did nothing. The real overclock was the friends we made along the way. And that was the Radeon HD 4200 in 2026. If you'd like to see me use a PC with 2GB of RAM, click here. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment with your thoughts and subscribe to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.